so you were telling me that you you started a hospital. Mm -hmm. That sounds so interesting to me. Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, uh, my mom had a severe case of rheumatoid arthritis, um, and she had failed all the standard medications uh, in the U.S. So uh, standard of care RA medications are uh, deeply immunosuppressive, where they suppress the immune system, so you're more susceptible to infection. Right. So she got multiple staph infections. She got tuberculosis, uh, all side effects medication, broke her back on a fall. Uh, that was a short fall because uh, of the uh, her bones becoming brittle. And we had ran out of options. And uh, I was reading a, uh, I started just doing kind of research to see if there was anything else out there. And uh, there was something um, called Coley's toxins for rheumatoid arthritis. It was from a uh, a paper I read from 1923, and uh, it was um, available at one hospital in Mexico. It had closed down a couple of years before, and I'm like, huh. Uh, so I called my two business partners, Scotty and Dedrick, and um, we went there. We uh, got a real estate agent. We were looking at some other properties to possibly do uh, something similar there, uh, but we found the hospital. Um, it had closed a couple of years before. Uh, we purchased the hospital from the owner and uh, hired back the original staff. Uh, my mom was uh, our first patient. She came in a wheelchair. She left three weeks later walking. She's been in remission for almost nine years, uh, be nine years uh, August 15th when we opened. And, um, you know, from there, we built it into uh, you know, something pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so uh, we treated cancer patients for uh, a long time. Uh, we had, it was considered alternative, right. new air quotes, um, but I started reaching out to a lot of immunologists and scientists about their papers because, uh, you know, immunotherapy for cancer, when we started, wasn't big. 2018, it won a Nobel Prize in medicine. And this hospital had been doing that for almost 40 years, uh, different immunotherapies. And so I uh, started reaching out to different scientists. They're like, you're doing what? And um, <laughs> brought them on. Uh, to our you know, uh, scientific advisory board and uh, um, just kind of built the team from there. Uh, and um, <clears throat> I guess uh, 2021, we started our uh, the stem cell portion of it. So we have a cancer, I say vaccine, don't think vaccine like uh, COVID vaccine. Oh. Um, let's think vaccine like a tumor vaccine where we take a piece of a tumor and make a, a vaccine for patients. Um, but I wasn't really interested very much in mesenchymal stem cells because I thought at the time it's a little, it, it, it's kind of basic for like a joint injuries and those type of things. Right. But um, there were a couple of scientists that we were open to working with. And one was a guy named Francisco Silva. And, um, and the thought was, you know, he can come in and partner with us on this, but he can also help us build out our cancer vaccine lab better. Um, and, uh, you know, we started the stem cell portion 2021, and now we're the largest manufacturer of mesenchymal stem cells in the world. We're the official stem cell provider of the UFC, and that part's blowing up, and that's actually funding all of our cancer research, uh, which is which is pretty cool. That is an amazing story, man. Yeah, thank you. Did you ever imagine that one day, you know, like growing up and you, you're doing these little business along <laughs> the way in life and working, did you ever imagine one day you own a hospital? No way. <laughs> No way. I mean, we, you know, we lived in the hospital for the first six months because none of us, you know, had ever run a hospital before. Right. And um, so we wanted to know every single thing about it. And um, uh, it's been a it's been an adventure. I mean, we lived in Tijuana, Mexico for uh, the first seven years. Wow. Put a grind in, man. I'm talking about seven days a week. Uh, I mean, it was just constant years of work. And um you know, we're blessed now. I look back and I would pray like, God, you know, can you make this happen, make this happen? And nothing would happen in time. Yeah. And I'm so grateful because the timing has been perfect because we weren't ready for all that then, you know, where we're at now, we've gotten, you know, to a position where, um, you know, it's, it's a, a lot of, a lot of people knowing what we're doing. We weren't ready for that then. Right. And, so, um, but the first, I mean, we've, we were close to bankruptcy multiple times over the years. I mean, it's been a, it's been a grind, but uh, you know, we're, we're very happy now. What caused you not to give up on it on such a tough project like that? And then just learn about it as you go. What kept you going? Yeah, I think the mission, I mean, just 
you know, I always like to say when in doubt, focus out. Like, uh, you know, focusing on giving to others and helping others has been like the driving force. You see a lot of suffering with cancer. Right. Uh, never say we're anywhere close to a cure for cancer or anything like that. Um, and so if you're honest about that, you see these people that are coming to you in stage and uh, some people you're able to actually turn around, which is always amazing. But, um, you know, most don't make it, you know, and just having, you know, getting close to the patient and having that drive, believing that there's a better way than they're doing it right now in the United States. Yeah. And so that's been I mean, even when we were going through the tough times, I never thought we were going to fail. There's like no way right like, we've come way too far to fail. Even a year in, we've come way too far to fail. Right and on. so, um, you know, we uh, thankfully made it through. I, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but I asked a lot of people, other doctors and professionals. Um, I noticed that a lot of men, a lot of men I counsel with around the world, really, and I noticed that a lot of men seem to be getting prostate prostate cancer. Do you know what causes that? Uh, not specifically. You know, the I mean, the, there's cancer rates are going up across the board. I think we're uh, one in two people will get cancer at some point in their life now. Wow, so, um, it's a lot. Yeah, I've asked several doctors about that. What causes prostate? They don't know. They said we don't know. No one really knows what causes cancer. Yeah. Now, prostate cancer, you know, you think about people, people ask me a lot, well, you know, is there a cure for cancer, right? right. Uh, is there some kind of secret cure? And I mean, I say absolutely not, but cancer is not a disease. It's so many different diseases depending on where the cancer is. Um, but I mean, if, if there was a cure, we would have found it um, because we have tried everything. We're very open to yeah. possibility when it comes to treatments and there is no uh, magic cure uh, for cancer. And now, a word from our sponsor. Give me the shirt. Come on. I ain't the children of the lot. Let's go. Come on. One shirt. Jackson! Jackson! What in the world going on out here? All these people are here for the merch, but we're sold out. They're here for the merch? Yeah. That's amazing. It's amazing. The merch is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. The merch is amazing. And so, how many binges do you own? Uh, well, the you know the the hospital, um, yeah, you know, which is part of so it's uh, Translational Advanced Medical Center along with CPI, which is Cellular Performance Institute, which is the stem cell portion of it, uh, and then some real estate. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, we have labs and those type of things wow. uh, connected with the hospital. White people, some else. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a philosophist as well. What is that exactly? Well, I think that if you're you know giving giving yourself to different charities or you know, supporting different charities, we have something called the Miracle Hope Foundation, which supports patients that can't afford treatment. Um, we had something called Hope Song, uh, where Every um, every week, uh, we'd fly two musicians from Nashville to Mexico to play for our patients, uh, and uh, kind of you know bring them up, go in the room, those type of things. And so uh, I was on the board of Operation uh, Light Shine, which is an anti sex trafficking um, uh, foundation. Uh, now with the Sentinel Foundation, they do they rescue children. Uh, and so uh, I think it's just you know giving back to charitable yeah. uh, causes. Right on. Nice. So are you a millionaire now? <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow. Did you think that you would go from rat to riches when you were growing up? I did. You did? I, did. I thought I, I, I thought I was going to be uh, just fine. <laughs> and so was that your driving force to go to because you at the time you didn't realize that you were poor. But when you realize you were poor, you were poor. Was mm -hmm. that your driving factor? I think as a kid, yes. And I think money was more of my driving factor in my 20s. Uh -huh. And that got pretty shallow. And I think, you know, now it really is uh, helping people. Right on, so, man. Of course, we want to make a great living. Nothing wrong with that. But, um, I mean, there's just so much more to life yeah. than that. It's just so empty 
And, um, you know, a lot of times people get depressed and, and those type of things and because they focus on themselves. And but when you're outward focused and focus on helping other people, a lot of that goes away. Yeah. And so um, that's just kind of how I, I choose to, to live my life. Right on. 